and welcome back to Couch Co-op, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Peasant, and I'm joined here with Doc Gracie on the controller. What up, what up, what up? And Blade Master 1, 2, 3, 4, 9 on commentary. I'm it, also here. You threw your numbers in again. He likes to use my, my full name. We're going to do a skit one day. At where least, at least he didn't throw I want to do out like in episode one where he had to bleep it. <laughs> I want to do a skit where it's just a normal conversation, like you two walk up. It's like, oh, hey, Doc. Hey, Blast Playmaster12349. And then just like every time you refer to him, you have to do all of the numbers. You're about to say Blastmaster. Blastmaster, bro! Blastmaster. Well, I mean, heck, during our break from the last episode to this one, we were just having like casual conversation. You like the whole time we're what just like throwing on? out the, the gimmick name Running for me. Off like that was reckless and stupid. What? Yeah. Did I just call you Doc through that whole casual conversation? Yes, you did. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm not bothered by it. Heck, half of my co-workers... I, I, I've got co-workers in, in wrestling. I don't even think know my government name. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. We'll do this your way for now. I can't make I can't I can't make uh, sense of what I'm looking at there. Is that a drawbridge? I don't know what that is. What do y'all think the greatest video game console out of all of them is? Ooh, throughout. You know what? I feel like there's some shit that's gonna poison me momentarily, so even with the That's why they give you two. Yep. I feel like that's a hint. The greatest of all time. Easy game com. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if people know what that is. Um <sighs> Granted, you know, that is subjective. Um, mm. I don't think it's... I don't think it's a... It's a. For me, it's not an answerable question. I don't feel. It depends on... What well, metric you use to measure that. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, if, you, if you're looking at it from, like, a numbers... Like... Really wasn't enough? I really that bad off, or did I accidentally use a blue one? No, it was. That, I'm pretty sure that was green. It probably wasn't enough. Okay, well either way. Because I mean, depending on like what metrics you want to use to, you know, figure that out, there is a strong, strong case to be made for the PlayStation Two. Oh yeah, super, super, super strong. Um, I'm and I'm not saying necessarily that that's my pick. I'm just saying there's a strong case to be made for it. Mm -hmm. My head goes two ways. You know, there's the, you know, logistic numbers part of my brain <sighs> that puts one console at the top. And then there's the, and there's the, this looked like a big deal. And this, you know, this created a lot of, you know, so much cool shit part of my brain. So the, this created so much cool shit, I would have to put the Dreamcast on top. You know, I had a feeling you were going to say that. Yep. I would put the Dreamcast on top. Dreamcast, I'll be honest, Dreamcast had some interesting... Um, my, mainly refer to games. I'll always refer to mainly just games. Um, it had some interesting games um, that we didn't get, even. There's, um, you Are know you talking about, about America didn't get? Yeah. Do you know about Renny Hero? What? No. Renny Guys, Hero. can I throw something out here real quick? Yeah. Yeah, I've been playing this particular version of Resident Evil 2 since the 90s when it came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just now for the first time ever discovering this room. Really? I've never, like... Where I are moved, you? I moved that bookshelf in that room I was last in on accident. Yeah. 
because you're supposed to get to get to the next section you're supposed to go down an elevator that's off to the side of this thing yeah i just i mean what's in this room i have not figured out what's in here yet but hmm. probably just like ammo and shit yeah okay. in bullets magnum bullets uh so it's probably just like a bone it's obviously not required to complete the game but i'm i'm sorry i just thought that was cool that it's just like oh i just made a new discovery that i never knew i'm sure that's fair i uh, i somebody's gonna be like you idiot that's always been there. i mean i was playing twin snakes and i i didn't know about at least i i don't think i ever knew about the um two rooms that are behind a blow upable wall uh right before the ocelot fight oh yeah yeah um i don't know if it's still that way in twin snakes but that's actually i believe where you got the your first camera in the original version mm. you, uh, but i'm sorry back to the console thing i'm sorry that just tickled me that i've made a new discovery in a 20 something year old game blade you were talking game. about rent a hero oh rent a hero yeah so we never got that game in america it was a Japanese, I believe Japanese exclusive. Um, and essentially you play as a normal person who some guy um, comes into contact with you. He's like, hey, take this suit and you can be a hero for pay. And you'd go about town doing this and that whatever like go rescue a cat up in a tree or and it was like open world or? go yeah it was it was kind of an open world thing huh. yeah and then so i would put the dreamcast there as as like my little like i think this was cool and this did a lot of really cool stuff that was significant and then the logistics part of my brain says ps4 is at the top just because I can, I feel like I can play just about everything on it. Leon, that woman was. Now, did the PS4 outsell the? It didn't outsell the PS2, right? No, I don't no, think any. I, what? No, I don't think anything outsold the PS2. No, the PS2 so. sold very well. And the problem, and the problem, and the reason that the logistics side of my brain doesn't say PS2 is because I think um, sales are a horrible way to judge. How good something is. Okay. So what? So what's uh, besides besides what we've already gone over? What's something that sold really well, oh, but shit. Oh, shit. you deem not? No, I. There's a lot of things that sold very poorly that were amazing. Hmm. The GameCube. Okay. That is very fair. That's. I, I, I will say that alone. You probably made. You've made that point. Off, off of that one console right there. Yeah, I mean, the GameCube was like, the GameCube was, to me was, great. was like way cooler than like, eh, it's arguable for Wii U, but Jesus. I think the GameCube was the best thing Nintendo did until the Switch. I'll agree with that. I'll agree, I'll agree with that, because, you know, the thing is, like, you know, someone might would make the, the argument of the Wii with that, but to me, the, the like the Wii was like it was great until the novelty wore off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, we got a few moments. Of that scene. Don't move. I yeah. thought uh, j just since we're on Wii, real quick, I thought it was extremely annoying that it didn't come with a nunchuck. But if you wanted to play any, and I mean. Any third-party game, you have to have a nunchuck. Wait, your Wii didn't come with a nunchuck? Nope. Well, I I got um someone gave me their Wii, and I and that would be why, because mine came packed with a nunchuck. Hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. My husband is the man responsible for the creation. I did not know that. William Birkin. Well, let's go down the line. I want to hear y'all's y'all's thoughts, and you can categorize it in two different ways or a couple different ways, like I did. But Blade, what are you what are you, what are you ranking as number one on consoles? I won't let anyone take the It's tough. Um, 
I do th I do think because I have a bit of biasism towards it. I don't even know if I said that word right, but uh, PlayStation 2 is probably my favorite. Uh, not only because it was my first console, um, n not only because it had great games on it, but it just, it feels like a time I could always go back to and feel comfortable. Like, I felt like I'd, I was uh, right at home playing those types of games on that console. More so than anything else. My precious G virus. No one will ever take Is that your only is that your only um uh, Yeah, games I mean that generation that whole generation, even original Xbox and GameCube, I thought were also pretty great consoles. Oh, that's another conversation entirely, but that would be a good one in the best generation. I might would have to agree with him on it because you, you said like that PS2 GameCube generation, right? Mm -hmm. I, I might would have to agree with you. Yeah, I think uh, again different you, combo, but yeah, it's that's hard to argue. Yeah, I feel like it's an in, more interesting conversation talking about what would be the greatest generation because that that you kind of factor in a lot of creativity in the games and the games that came out and everything, and there just was like a different feel for like. The games of like that generation that's like the one generation where it's like everybody was every console every company making consoles every company making everybody was crushing it hmm. yeah i mean mm -hmm. playstation was crushing it nintendo was crushing it with the gamecube even if sales didn't reflect that yeah well, even with me not being a microsoft guy xbox was crushing it oh, yeah. mm -hmm. i mean and then you also when you factor in like if you want to factor in like the handheld console part of things that's that's the game boy advance generation yeah Ooh. yeah you know yeah that was that's great too yeah you know so it's hard to argue that being the best generation i mean we were free from so much stuff as well microtransactions didn't exist like yep. a lot of like a lot of like advertising, marketing stuff didn't exist. Yeah, we were, we were, I mean, that was pretty much one of the last few years of the, how video games were advertised back then. Mass multiplayer had really just come out. And, and you know, and that was like the, like that was the first console generation that, you know, like all of them, with the carriers of the um, even the GameCube, you know, basically had this, but that's when you were getting into, like, the capability of, like, online play on consoles. Yeah. And, yeah, they hadn't worked out the kinks to the point of getting to where we are now with it, but at the same time, no, I don't remember any of them sucking. Like, as far as the online aspect, I don't remember any console's online aspect sucking. Again, would didn't had not yet become like what it is today. Right. But it got off to a great start. Yeah. Um. So that would be though yours, your picks on a. I console? would say I would say so. Yeah. Ah. Uh, from a personal standpoint, with me, I gotta say I maybe give the nod to. The Sega Genesis, or Master System, however you want to word it, um, just, just, I feel like, I feel like that was, for me, like, that probably was my, that was my first favorite, uh, console, and it's the one, like, when I look back at, like, the old consoles and stuff, fondest memories, like, you know, you had the Sonic series, you had, like, even stuff that, like, a lot of people don't remember, like, there's a forgotten gem from the Sega Genesis era, Vector Man, uh, there, there were two games in the Vector Man series, both of them just fantastic freaking games, like, and then even, like, uh, multi, uh, multi, like, multi-platform games at that time, for me personally, the best kick, because again, that was a time period where it's just like, 
if a game was on more than one console, it wasn't 100% the exact same game on each console. There yeah. were like differences, even if it was just something as simple as the you know the the music and the sound based on like the sound quality the console was capable of putting out. To me, the Genesis always had the best version of those games. Uh, it had the best version of like all of the OG Mortal Kombat games. The Genesis had the best version of. Um, it, you know something that you know, has it me and you played on couch co-op, Battletoads and Double Dragon. Oh yeah. And I know we played the Super Nintendo version on that episode. But to me, Genesis had the best version of that game. Oh, I mean, to me, I don't, I don't think that's up to anyone. Statement. I think just factually, the Genesis version is a better version of that game. Yeah. So it's like so from a from that standpoint. Yeah, I got to give it to. Uh, I got. I got to give it to the Sega Genesis. Um, beyond that, though, I honestly think I might have to give that edge to. Uh, did like from the from the other standpoint. I'd have to throw out the NES as well. Honestly, if for no other reason, you're talking about the console that at that time single-handedly saved the American game industry. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that was coming off of uh, the video game crash, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's just, if not for that console, who knows where, you know, where the game industry would have ended up post there. Mm. I mean, I'm sure, cause it, I mean, it's just like, video games are such an undeniable, just like, important part of our, like, our culture and like, you know, our, our lives and everything that I'm sure there would be the game industry in some point would still be around in this country today, even without that. But like I said, who knows what the landscape of it would be, if not for that console. So yeah, I'd, I'd, I I I got to give the old man some props. And peasant, you said uh, you said Saturn and PS4, right? It said Dreamcast. 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 That, yeah, I, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. Dreamcast for. I guess the best way to put it, Dreamcast is like my artist's pick, and PS4 is the logistical pick. That's what I'd say, like, Genesis is my artist pick. I'm not... Item box, though. Item box. Oh, wait. I'm in the wrong elevator. Um, yeah, G uh, Genesis would be my artist pick. And the NES would be my logistics. Um, talking about old consoles, uh, did you guys see that uh, Atari is about to release, re-release the twenty six hundred? I kind of saw that. Yeah, that's not really Atari, though, is it? Well, it's whoever owns Atari these days. But yeah, did they officially go back to being Atari? Because didn't they like buy Atari and then they used the name, but they were a completely different company that didn't even do like. Video game stuff. What's what's some shit happened with Atari? What's I mean, a lot of shit happened with Atari. I will say that this twenty six hundred they're coming out is being released fully under the Atari name. So what is it? Is it a classic? Is it another classic? Or what's the deal? It's it's kind of kind of like that. I do believe that it's uh it's I believe it's going to be smaller in size than what the original twenty six hundred is, but it's still going to be the same exact build as a twenty six hundred. Um, you know, or the same exact body, just like I said, maybe smaller. Of course, it'll have like you, you know, your your modern conveniences like your HDMI and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, it's still got the switches on the front. You can flip to. I think they're the switches now. Like one of them maybe like will flip uh, aspect ratio. One of them will flip between a color filter and a black and white filter. Things like that. What's really cool about it though, there's no a uh, hard drive with prepacked. ROMs like it, so it's 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 not a ROM emulating machine. Mm -hmm. um, but what they've done with it is it's going to be prepacked with a because it has the cartridge slot on there. It's going to be prepacked with a cartridge, 
that's basically like a, I think like a 10 and one type deal. Uh huh. So it'll have 10, uh, 10 games included on this one, uh, this one cartridge. And the way that cartridge will work is it has switches on the back of the, uh, the cartridge. And on the front of it, it'll give you like different combinations for those switches. And you basically flip the switches to a certain thing, and that's what tells the cartridge what ROM to load into the game to the console when you turn it on. Right. So, like, you you get your you you get the ten games that way by basically changing the the cartridge to a different one when you flip those uh, switches. But in addition to that, it's still a standard um, Atari twenty six hundred uh, cartridge slot. It will play old Atari twenty six hundred cartridges well well that's pretty cool um and actually um it'll play atari 2600 cartridges and atari 7800 cartridges mm. oh that's nice. so not 5200 they said fuck the 50 <laughs> <laughs> that's fair i fully support this only in the sense that i believe archiving should be held very high and it should be done and you know, we should be able to remember things in the past and everything. But I How did he not die? It totally bit him. Y'all saw that, right? Yeah. Dude, Leon is basically a demigod. I don't know what you're talking about. The man can make missiles continue to appear at the rocket launcher. Like why are you even asking these questions? I'll call him Jaws. <laughs> He's missing one of them. Might as well call him <laughs> Jaw. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, and, and 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 what I also like and and you know what? Because I know that some people sometimes complain about the uh, the price on these uh these retro consoles like this. Yeah. But considering what this thing does, and considering that it'll you know. I mean, it's still a working functional Atari 2600 that'll play your cartridges like the old ones. Like, it's being priced at 129 I don't think that's bad for that. Yeah, that's not. It plays <laughs> three different... It plays all the games from three different consoles. Yeah. Two different. Two. Oh. Again, you, you, you forgot they're ignoring the 5200. Hey, man. They probably should. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. He just stood there the whole time like, well, I hope he didn't get eaten by that alligator. Because she's a bitch. Ada's very interesting. I hate Ada. She is a very well-written character. Well, I don't think you're supposed to love her. That's fair. John's dead. What? Never mind. But it's like Let's just get out of there's here. plenty of characters you're not supposed to love that you do. Oh, talking about characters that you love, peasant. Oh, I love characters. Who do we love? I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Now, granted, this is not any kind of confirmed thing. Mm -hmm. It's just something that I seen that as I as far as I know right now, it is still just simply a rumor. Mm -hmm. Have you heard or seen the the rumor about Joker Two? I try to not care about that. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like the first one. Oh no no no! It's not that I didn't like. It. I loathed. It. Yeah. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are with what they're doing with Joker 2. What are they doing with Joker 2? The running uh, rumor that I've seen online, it's a musical. That explains why... Uh, what's Lady Gaga is Harley Quinn. Yeah. Yep. Yep, the running rumor is it is a musical. Yeah, but is it like... Is it like a bunch of dumbasses are calling it a musical and it's got like a couple of songs that make sense in real life in it? 
Like, is there a fucking number where they're just in a nightclub and fucking Harley Quinn gets on stage and sings a song like she's doing karaoke? Or uh, I know it's just a rumor, but like, I'm just making that prediction, like ahead of time. Well, uh, like I could see them on a fucking date in like a nightclub. Like he, they, they took over the town and just for shits and giggles, he captures a bunch of people and puts them in a nightclub and takes her on a fake date. And then she gets up on stage and like starts singing and shit. Well, from what I've seen, and again, no idea what what amount of truth there is to any of this, but from what I've seen, it's the director that's been hinting that it's a musical. Hmm. hmm. Is he brain damaged? Um, is they brain damaged? I don't know. It, he's directing a sequel to it, so he must be. They must be. I don't know. You did not like that first Joker movie. You did not. I hope this movie gets uh, I cashed in for a rebate just like fucking Batwoman. I saw the movie with him. I, I can recall all the emotions he was having and at what scene. I'm a that's very, how, I'm a very that's reasonable... How, that's how bad he did not like I'm it. I'm a very reasonable person, Doc. You've had many conversations with me about many problematic movies and you know that I'm a very open person to movies so I think it says something the emotions I feel about this movie what do you think a sewer manager gets paid <laughs> I don't know it matters he's laying on the floor deed now <laughs> <laughs> no, bro. Uh, sometimes I just get these questions that need to be asked out loud. I mean, sometimes you gotta ask them, man. Sometimes, man. Sometimes these are just the questions in life that we need answered. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody gets paid. I would hope a sewer guy would get paid very well. <laughs> no, dude, that's his banishment. That's his banishment. You are the sewer manager now. So, let's explore this Joker movie thing more. Oh, peasant. okay. I, I, <laughs> no, no, no. no. I will. Here's a, here's a reason I why. will, but you have to understand I'm going to be very mad. Okay, that's... And that's, there's a lot of things that I'm just going to tell you. I just don't want to talk about that movie because it's very personal. Well, here's here's the thing about it. Here Here's why it's such an interesting uh, topic for me is I understand that I mean you understand what Batman is to me oh yeah 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 like you ooh, I get to let me boom, let me boom some guys real quick um anyway you understand what Batman is to me and to me it seems like for you Batman is not even the attraction of Batman the Joker is the attraction of Batman for you Oh yeah, hundred percent. So it's just like you're you're. It's very much like I'm Batman, you're the Joker. So for you to have a Batman thing or, or a Joker thing rather that you feel this way about fascinates me. It, it, it you know it almost like the level of hatred that I can just hear in your voice for it right now. It's almost like this movie is your Batman and Robin. Well, it's upsetting to me on multiple levels because I truly believe in my core that people should be able to express their, you know, artistic opinions and Batman in general, the concept of the Batman universe, I very much believe should be allowed to have multiple ran renditions of that's why i like gossam by gaslight and ninja batman and the dc universe and all the different ver the, the bat that laughs and and you know bat dad it's like there's so many different renditions of batman and everyone's done a different way the different styles that the cartoon has done with the joker making him a mobster making him a gangster making him a you know, a punk, make, you know, all of this stuff, I think people should be able to do that. And it upsets me that I feel the way I do about the Joker because I hate that I am being 
a hypocrite about that belief. But I cannot help but feel the way that I do. All right, well, I guess from there, um, my question is, what is it about this thing that makes you feel this strongly about it? It's a lot of personal things that I feel about mental illness and how they portrayed it. And, and a lot of people disagree with me. They think that the movie was very, you know, light shining on mental illness. To, to me, it, it made it feel like they were saying to me that, you know, people with mental illness are bad, right? And the real message of the movie was that the government doesn't take care of the mentally ill and a bunch of stuff like that. But I feel like they presented that in a very horrible way. And I feel like they did not properly represent a lot of mental health problems in the way that they could have. I also believe that, as much as I believe that people should be allowed to have their opinions and and um, displays of the Joker. Evil is one of my favorite things to study in cinema and in stories, and I only think there's a handful of characters that truly personify what evil is. Because if you talk to a lot of psychiatrists and a lot of philosophers and a lot of things, a lot of people would say that evil doesn't really truly exist, right? There's this big debate over it and everything. And, and because of that, I think that's a big reason that there are only a handful of truly evil characters that have been presented in cinema and in stage and in stories in general. And a lot of that is spiritual stuff, so it's like, you know, whether it counts or not, the actual embodiment of evil. The Joker is a character that is truly evil, and what it comes down to is his awareness and choice to do something and i believe that is the single most core of the joker if you have one thing that is it that is what makes the joker he is evil and he is evil because of this reason and you can make him whatever you want that's why i believe the joker is more batman than batman is when Batman said that Batman is an idea and anyone can bring that up in the Nolan movies, of course, and anyone can take up that mantle and be Batman, that is not the fucking case. But that is the case for the Joker. And you took away him making the choice to be evil. You took it away from him. You did that. You. I did do this. <laughs> no, it, it, I'm I'm fascinated hearing this. Like I'm I'm legit. It's yeah, I mean it's it's incredibly upsetting to me because I, I feel very strongly about the character and I feel like that's a part of the character that's easy to understand and it's 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 an easy part about him. They whatever you know whatever. Um, and because of that, it's not the Joker. It's just some guy. Lipstick. Because you can't tell me. No, I don't want to say that. It's, it's, it's very tricky to talk about because it has so much to do with mental illness. And that's why I don't like talking about it either. Because I, you know, I don't have schizophrenia. I don't have schizodysphectia. I don't have whatever the laughing thing is so i i don't feel like i can talk about those things and talk about what they're like or whatever else um but i still have a lot of opinions on the way that those specific things were portrayed and i wholeheartedly believe that the joker is not psychotic I believe the Joker is evil. And I believe there is a huge difference. You know, 
In all honesty, like, I can... I can get behind that, like... I can get behind your issues with it, because it's like, now... At this point, when I think about it... It's like... Even with you being as much of a Joker guy as you are... Any, like... You, you, you watch... The Dark Knight, you watch Batman 89, you watch um, any episode of the animated series where Joker was the villain in that episode. Basically, you watch anything where Batman is just pummeling the ever-living dog shit out of the Joker. Even with you being a Joker guy, for those reasons of what the Joker's supposed to be, you don't feel bad about Batman pummeling the shit out of him. No. But... Now, like, and when you think of it that way, it, it does, like, your reasoning does make sense because you look at that Joker and what he is and, you know, him being so mentally ill and all this other kind of stuff. Now think of the idea of that Joker getting pummeled by Batman. This is a big problem that I have with Hollywood right now is they want to redeem everybody. They've ruined just about every great villain within the last 10 years. One of the one of the other great villains that I love love villains so much. They ruined Maleficent. They absolutely ruined Maleficent, who was the greatest Disney villain ever to exist, and they ruined her by redeeming her. They've ruined so many other villains throughout the years by giving them their own story and redeeming them. And some of them are fine if they're originally meant to be that way, and they're not really the villain you're just giving a story of like two people opposing each other or whatever that's fine but as soon as you give a villain that was supposed to be a villain a redemption story you're ruining it real quick why did he decide that his head needed to become his titty and grow another head is this the first time you're fighting him uh yeah. this version no this no, is your this first is, time oh yeah this is the first time yeah, no, the the thing that we fought previously was one of his little spawn things. Is, isn't Remake 2, isn't it like... Won't you fight him before this? Like on oh, the yeah, thing, well and before. Like, yeah, like well before. Falls off. Because yeah. we're out of the sewers at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Like, you fight him in Remake before you even get to the sewers. Mm hmm No, but no, honestly, dude, that's that was interesting hearing your take on that, and I honestly I can't say I disagree with you on any of it. I really don't like talking about it because it gets me kind of emotional. Because part of the main reason is like I fully do wholeheartedly believe that you know people should be allowed to give their interpretation on something. That is a character that is just very close to my heart, and that was able to pull off something that. You know, I see many other character writers strive to create and can't. And it's not like they did, you know, significant damage or anything like that. Like all the other, you know, all the other interpretations of the Joker are still there. And we're probably going to get a new interpretation of the Joker in the new DCEU and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, take it easy. I've made the choice to just avoid talking about it. I, it's It's interesting now that this that I'll that I'm saying this on the internet and now it's there because I just avoid having this conversation with friends and stuff like that because it's like I feel this way and they should have perfectly should have been allowed to make that movie I wish it didn't exist but I'm just gonna shut up about it that was very interesting to hear are we out on time Capable oh, I don't, I don't even know. This would probably be, with with the end of my ramp and Ada laying there on the bed, it's honestly probably not a bad time to... Oh, we've hit 40 minutes, so let's get out of this cutscene. And oh, there we are! Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us to this episode of Couch Co-op. I have been peasant. I'm right here. You don't have to be so loud. <laughs> He's he's having he's been having a moment. Okay, all right. So, so on the well, next ho episode, hopefully you'll calm down on the next one. So on the next episode, which will probably be close to finishing this uh, oh. playthrough, oh. on the next one, and I say that uh, 
we bring the topic back to something that you would enjoy talking about. Yeah. Maybe even keep it on the Joker, but an aspect of Joker talk that you would enjoy talking about. Okay. You know, something. But, yeah. I guess, uh, do, do, your, do your catchphrase gimmick. Stay comfy, everyone. Bye. Bye. I gotta pee.